Good morning, students. So we have seen the manufacturing, the prospects of manufacturing, the importance of manufacturing, but we also saw the downslide of it in terms of its environmental impact and how it adversely affects the health of human beings naturally, which we see all around it these days in terms of water pollution, in terms of noise pollution, in terms of air pollution, and naturally it is causing an enormous amount of complexities within our own uh, disease systems and different kinds of problems are now uh, are now happening among people who are very very young in age earlier these problems and complexities the medical complexities never happened to people at least uh, who were not 50 years old or 55 years old now they have started happening to even young people who are barely 23 or 24 so that is what we are talking about you know, so naturally a very important uh, topic uh, comes up here which is the control of environmental degradation because you, you have to understand we had studied the topic of uh, sustainable development whereby if you go into an indiscriminate indiscriminate uh, exploitation of your natural resources to meet not just your requirements but to also to meet the greed of uh, you know making more money then it is just a matter of time that the whole environmental balance kind of uh, gets offset and uh, you start having problems even in the environment and the future generations would not be left with much to use because you've used excessive amount of it already and that is the reason and one of the very important things which we can't do about with it without uh, which humans can't do without two very very important things are air and water of course we need food but then different humans prefer different kinds of food someone in norway would be having something else for breakfast i would be having something else for breakfast someone in japan would be having something else for lunch and i would be having surely something else for lunch and similarly someone in canada would be having something else for dinner and i would be having something else for dinner certainly so that keeps changing all the time but then Air is air, water is water, right? You can't do without them. And uh, this is what now we are going to look at. Control of environmental degradation. Every, every liter of wastewater discharged by our industry pollutes eight times the quantity of fresh water. So essentially what it is saying is that if you have one uh, liter of contaminated or polluted water, it would just, and if you add it to the water source, then uh, or, uh, or the water resources or wherever the water is, it is not going to pollute or contaminate only one liter of fresh water. It would have the capacity to contaminate at least eight liters of fresh, uh, of, uh, fresh water. So that is just you can see uh, how dreadful uh, it is in terms of its uh, widespread impact. Just one liter of contaminated water can pollute uh, eight liters of fresh water. So minimizing use of water for processing by reusing and recycling it into or more successive stages. Uh, we studied that and I told you that uh, that is the reason why water harvesting is important because recycling of water is an expensive enterprise. Um, okay, Harvesting of water to meet water requirements, treating hot water and effluents before releasing them in rivers and ponds. Treatments of industrial effluents can be done in three phases. Primary treatment by mechanical means. This involves screening, grinding, flocculation and sedimentation secondary treatment by biological process tertiary treatment by biological chemical and physical processes this involves recycling of fresh water overdrawing of groundwater reserves by industry where there is a threat to groundwater resource also needs to be regulated legally as uh, uh, you know there may, many cities and towns in india today because of the excessive use of groundwater because of the pollution shifting of uh, uh, the uh, population from villages to towns and from towns to cities this is leading to excessive amount of uh, pressure on the water tables in our soil and that is the reason if you pick up any data from india uh, you would find that the water table has been shrinking uh, earlier in 80s they could find water at 10 feet gradually it went down to uh, 30 40 feet 
now in there are places in gurgaon and in many areas of uh, delhi and gurgaon area where you cannot find water uh, uh, you know before 100 feet or 80 feet or 90 feet earlier it used to be barely 20 30 40 feet now the water table has been shrinking steadily because you have been and i have been extracting and pumping out a lot of water which because uh, you know if you start building skyscrapers 30 storied high 25 storied high naturally you know with when hundreds and thousands of people start living there they need water just just like we just discussed you can't do without water or air you know i need water everyone needs it and that is what the problem is so the water extraction from the ground also needs to be uh, carefully regulated okay that is what we are trying to so uh, an ntpc shows the way in this ntpc is the major power providing corporation in india it has that is uh, ntpc the full form is national thermal uh, power corporation it has iso certification for ems and environment management system 14001 the corporation has a proactive approach for preserving the natural environment and resources like water oil and gas and fuels in places where it is setting up power plants this has been possible through optimum utilization of equipment adopting latest techniques and upgrading existing equipment minimizing waste generation by maximizing ash utilization and providing green belts for nurturing because we have to understand uh, national thermal power corporation as the name suggests most of its power plants students run uh, uh, you know where the basic uh, source of energy happens to be coal it's not oil of course in certain areas it is oil but you have to understand um, right we right in the beginning we had studied india is not uh, india doesn't have a surplus oil you know we have uh, surplus coal but we don't have surplus oil so naturally we have to import it from uh, different countries uh, which have surplus oil but then uh, but then it is obvious that the importing uh, of uh, oil is expensive and when the import is expensive that is the raw material or the basic ingredient for a power plant happens to be oil which is more expensive the power that they would generate would also be expensive the bill that you and i would be pay paying would be far more compared to say if the source of energy happens to be coal here because india has uh, you know we are surplus in coal and we have sufficient coal reserves and we do not have to import it uh, from hundreds and thousands of kilometers from different global suppliers and that is the reason the gener uh, the generation of electricity that happens uh, with, the, uh, with the help of coal happens to be economical and affordable for us and that is what we prefer but you have to understand coal when it is burned and everything happens it leaves out ash in the air okay it leaves out enormous amount of ash in the air which you can understand it is not good for the environment because very very minute particles of ash keep floating in the air and that is the reason why if you visit uh, the areas around power plants whether in gujarat or whether in bihar or in west bengal for that matter you would see the air uh, appears to be very very hazy you know it appears very very hazy it is precisely for the reason that it, it it all you see is the ash dust which is floating there and that would be the same ash you would uh, breathe which the uh, which the population living in those areas breathe and which clogs their lungs and they uh, start developing lot of uh, medical complications and this is what we are saying that the ntpc is showing the way by uh, you know recycling the use of uh, ash because we've throughout this chapter we've seen recycling of water and emphasis on that but uh, ntpc is uh, spearheading this movement whereby it is also recycling ash so that the ash doesn't actually have to go to the air okay before as soon as the ash gets released they, they that is collected and they use it for recycling purposes and and uh, and manufacture and produce something else uh, students uh, <clears throat> this is uh, this is over now 
I'll give you the assignment today, but uh, we tomorrow start the next chapter, and I think this is the last chapter in um, the geography syllabus, which is lifelines of national economy. Uh, uh, we have this is just an extension of this chapter, uh, in my opinion, uh, manufacturing industry, which again happens to be, and the industries that we talked about, uh, that is automobile and petroleum and iron and steel, all of them happen to be very important for uh, you know for uh, for the economy of any uh, uh, industrialized or an advanced country or a country which happens to be having the ambitions and the aspirations of becoming an industrial and um, an advanced society uh, but here we would look into uh, different means of transport and how all that manufacturing that you do or a nation does that gets to different parts of the country uh, and also internationally to different parts of the world that is what we would be primarily looking in this chapter thank you